All right, folks, Ken here, and um, I want to bring you a video today on probably the most universal fishing rig uh, that we commonly employ here in the Northeast, and I know it's used down south. I know it's used all over the place. Uh, people refer to it differently. Uh, some people call it chicken rig. And things like that. Uh, just saw a little bad piece of my leader there with some pinched spots I want to take out. Okay, so um, this is one of the simplest and one of the most diverse. Um, and it's, it's very easy to tie. Uh, it's two dropper loops, right? So dropper loop, you just cross your leader over like that, right? And you can just do one, two, three, four, five twists, right? See that there? Here's your outer part of the loop. You're going to bring that through the split twists. So you do five twists. And you split those twists right in the middle. Then you pull the outer loop right through. And it helps to hold this with your teeth gently. So you get it like that. And now you see the knot. I like to wet it. The knot is cinching up, right? You pull that tight. There's a dropper loop. And uh, this dropper loop happens to be a little shorter than I normally like, but this is just for demonstration purposes right now. I'll make this one bigger. All right, so the high-low rig is a combination of two dropper loops. One, two, three, four, five. We're keeping that space open in the middle, right? That's splitting the twists. The outer loop, once again, gets pulled through the split twist. I would have liked to make that a little longer, but uh, I'm working with limited material here. Okay, so there's the, the two dropper loops. And what I'm going to do next is... I'm going to tie my sinker loop, which is just a surgeon's loop, right? So uh, it's a double overhand knot. One, two. You can do three if you like. Some people like to do three. I don't really care. I don't find it makes a whole lot of difference. And there's my... I'm going to trim that tag in. All right. And that's the rig. Now, the beauty of this rig is you now have the ability to adorn it any old way you want. And you can fish this any old way you want. Now, right here, I just used 40 pound um, floral carbon. And, uh, let's see which one was it, by the way. Uh, that was my Berkeley, uh, 40 pound fluorocarbon, right? So there's my sinker loop and there's my first, uh, dropper loop standing off, right? And a lot of people today like to use this new T-knot. Uh, I think that's a little advanced, so I'm not going to confuse people with the T-knot, but I'm going to mention it because you can make this high-low rig. Some people think that the T-knot is better, that it uh, reduces line twisting and tangling better than a dropper loop, right? Um... So, 
The deal is, now that you have your simple high-low rig tied, there are so many different things that can be done with this rig. Uh, it's a commonly used fluke rig. High-low rigs are used in Nantucket and elsewhere, Montauk Point, all the time. And uh, I have a box of beads here. You can adorn beads on there any old way you like. You just kind of, you know, make this, pinch this down as tightly as you can. It's 40 pound test. So, um, and you can slide beads on or what have you, right? Um, some people call these hoochie skirts. It's a squid skirt and, uh, let's see, you can just cut the end slightly, right? It's got a hole. And now you can put that on like so. And you've still got the loop here. And to finish it, you take your hook and you pinch your loop, push it through the eye. And some people like to double loop it around like that for a little bit more security. I don't see the necessity in doing that, but some people like to do that. So um, right here, as it is, and you can get as crazy as you want and put as much jewelry on these things as you please, really. But, um, you know, here's your sinker loop. This will fish right now as a fluke rig, as a sea bass rig, even as a cod rig. Um, this type of rig can be used for almost anything. It's, it's a, dri a rig that works very well on the drift. And uh, sometimes you need longer leaders on the drift if, if the drift is really, you know, high speed. Um, but in many, many places, uh, this is a very standard rig to catch many different fish. Uh, it's used for porgies and if I were porgy fishing inshore I might choose to put a 1-0 or size 1 or size 2 or, or maybe a 2-0 uh, octopus hook on there or a bait holder hook for porgies and again you might include a bead you might not um, I really like glow beads a lot right just for demonstration's sake, I'm going to put one of those on. Um, beads come in all different colors, and you might use any different color bead for any reason at all. But um, here's my top loop, okay? Pinching the loop so that my leader will slide through, hopefully. Come over here little bead hole. Oh, I think I have to really pinch it down a little a little smaller. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Sorry about that taking so long. Uh, having a little saliva on the leader doesn't hurt either. Okay, so my loop went through my bead, right? And uh, again, there's so many things that we can do with this. For cod, you've got a uh, a jig hook here with, with, a, with an orange tube. This color is super, super popular for cod fishing, right? So you just might uh, drape that right on there as is and uh, i'm sure that will prove to be very effective cod fishing um you like to have your your clam on there generally right so um then what i might choose to do oh look at that 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 eye's got to be pinched down um so what i might choose to do for cod fishing if you if any of you guys 
watched my COD video, um, this is exactly what I did, how I rigged it up. I put my orange tube onto my dropper loop with the help of the, oh boy, it's sticking in there for some reason. Um, so I got the glow bead on there already, as you see. And boy, it's hanging up in there. It's crazy. My goodness gracious, what the heck is going on? All right, it's giving me a bit of trouble, so what, what I'm gonna do, try and make that easier, is just cut it in half try to solve the problem like that. And I believe we're getting it done this time. Okay, so again, um, I've got another hook here somewhere. Where'd my hook go? I could have sworn I took another hook out. I'm going to find that later when I don't want to find it. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see. Go to the box. Yeah. All right, so. Thread another hook on. And nothing fancy, I can tell you. This is just how... I fished my rig on that codfish trip in back on the 18th of January 2020. I have the video up on my YouTube channel and that's how it looked basically. All right. So my clam was on my hook. I had a little glow bead and I had a flash of orange tube on there and the codfish seemed to like it a lot. I caught quite a few that day. And I think it's a good choice of rig pretty much any time trying for the cod. So um, there's a few variations for you. Um, some people for porgy fishing, they just like to put the, the bead itself and then the hook, right? Um, and what do I have in here? All right. So here's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things is my backwater baits um this is a poison tail jig in the quarter ounce size and for fluke there are a few things better there's the other hook i was looking on and uh so then we don't want to mess up our skirt on our backwater baits right we thread the uh loop through the through the eye hole on the jig and it's important that you want to gently pull all of your silicone skirt so you don't get any pinched off in the in the leader in the dropper loop right so um that's one way to fish it and uh that'd make a nice fluke rig right there and make a great sea bass rig it will catch almost everything in the ocean um you could conceivably catch a striped bass on it, although not usually. Uh, there are a lot of different fish that will hit these rigs, no question about it. I've been told even occasionally, some people do like to fish these type of rigs for Tautog. I'm not a fan, personally. I don't like fishing a high-low high rig for Tautog. Um... I think that the high hook will attract all kinds of other fish that you may or may not want. I mean, if you're if you're happy with catching sea bass, then by all means go for it. Put the high hook on. 
or if you're after a codfish put the high hook on um, but if you're really targeting nothing but blackfish alone then forget about the high hook um, just stick to the the bottom rig and that's it um, so there you have it there's so many variations of things colors shapes sizes uh this okay so like this is another common um well liked successful codfish teaser you thread this onto the hook and then onto the dropper loop uh leader um and there's so many different kinds uh like I showed you, uh, this type of, a lot of people call these hoochies, hoochie skirts, right? And they come in glow, in pink, and white, and pink and white, and greenish, uh, ghost green, all these different pretty things, glow in the dark stuff I'm very fond of for fluke myself. They are known to work very, very well. And um, I highly recommend those. And oh, look, we got pretty quarter ounce backwater baits, poison tails up the yin yang. And these are all my sweet honeys. I just love them, love them, love them so much. Um, yeah, so there is the diversity of the high low rig, and it has so many uses, so many effective uses. There are other ways to tie it. I think this is the simplest way. This is the most common way. Um, and the great thing about this rig, and most any rig really, is that you can adjust the presentation by tying your dropper loops longer, shorter, uh, higher, lower, there's so many different variations um, and you have to play with these things and adjust as you go and kind of find out how the fish are feeding. You know, at one point of the tide, the tide could be really running hard and they may bite better with a longer leader. The tide could slow up. Maybe they'll, you know, bite a shorter leader a little bit better. It's always changing, you know, um, bait uh, choices and all these things. Colors, you know, you've got so many different colors and so many variations, so many different things to choose from. Look at all these different beads and so on. And uh, I'd be remiss if I left out, you know, geezers, teasers, right? So one of the best fluke teasers on the market what the heck let's open one up see what it looks like on that rig right so um there you go and i might want to put that on the top hook myself and Maybe below it, I even fish a bucktail, okay? You could do that too. I could tie a bucktail down here. And, you know, that's that's the universal uh, jigging rig, really, okay? So you can tie in a, a dropper loop or a T-knot. And you could tie a snap or a loop at the bottom, right? And attach your bucktail that way. Um, Mr. John Skinner has uh, demonstrations of his rig, which is the most common jigging rig. Uh, a sinker loop at the bottom for your bucktail. And the dropper loop on top. For whatever teaser you want to put on, whether that be a geezers or a uh, backwater baits or a, a glass minnow or what have you. You know, there's just so many different things you can try. And uh, don't forget, you could also just put on a naked hook and a gulp too. 
and that'll still catch fish, believe it or not. You know, at times, um, sometimes jewelry is great. Sometimes jewelry really, really gets the bites. And the great thing about this geezer right here is the long shank, that six inch gulp grub just sits on there so nicely. You thread it on and bada bing, you're fishing. You might want to go with the pink shine there or um, a uh, salmon red or, or something that glows. It's entirely up to you. But uh, that's it. That's the diversity of the high-low rig. I hope you learned something good here. And please, any questions at all, uh, post them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer anything. Uh, thanks for watching today. This is Ken talking about the high-low rig. And we'll see you next time.